By 2012, the first three epic battles between Pacquiao and Marquez had become so legendary that audiences demanded a fourth. And so, the ferocious Filipino was set to face off against the macho Mexican one last time. The fight would crescendo with one of the most insane knockouts in boxing to cap off one of the greatest rivalries in sports history. Leading up to what would be this last final encounter, Pacquiao was ahead by two fights on paper. But many fans and pundits were skeptical, and even the two champions were not satisfied that they had proved themselves the better man. All three scorecards had been marred by controversy, so it was still an open question on who actually reigned supreme. This time, they both agreed to leave it out of the hands of the judges. Each determined that only one man would end the fight on their feet, making public a kind of warrior's pact to settle the matter for good. To understand what happened, we have to go back to their very first encounter. The fight that had set the blueprint, cementing the weapons and tactics that would persist throughout the next three. The rivalry began with the bang, Pacquiao sending Marquez to the canvas three times in the first round. The wild pressure fighter had shocked Marquez with how quickly he could cover distance. Pacquiao unpinned his rear foot to dart into his left, leaning and lunging in deep to crash through Marquez's defenses. But Marquez wasn't the type to let a mere three knockdowns in the first round make him gunshot. He got back into the fight with brilliant counterpunching. When Manny dove in head first, Marquez would meet him with compact uppercuts and looping body shots, targeting Pac-Man's exposed sides. When Pacquiao tried to circle, Marquez would turn with him to sneak in tighter punches landing crisp lead hooks and uppercuts. Having clawed his way back from a desperate first round, Marquez soon built his own offense. In an astonishing turn, Marquez consistently nailed Pacquiao with overhands, unpinning his back foot to shift forward and catch his faster opponent as he tried to step away off angle. But Pacquiao's flames would not be so easily quenched. Pacquiao stopped shifting and ducking forward to mitigate the risk of Marquez's counters, and instead adopted a more upright and mobile style. Mixing in boxing with his brawling, Manny used in and out forward to counter Marquez's counters, dragging him into long exchanges that tired him in the later rounds. In the end, the fight was scored a split decision draw. With the fans and the fighters themselves wanting a resolution, it was only a matter of time before the ceasefire was broken and the war would continue. The two only grew in skill over the next eight years. The back and forth between the role of aggressor and aggressive defender would continue to shift throughout the next two bouts. As Jim Lampley put it, Pac-Man is by nature an attacker, but he's also a great counterpuncher. And Marquez is by nature a counterpuncher, but he's also a great attacker. So, like two nations in an arms race, the Filipino and the Mexican kept improving their attacks and counterpunching, adjusting fight by fight, round by round, over the next two bouts. Manny started to vary his foot positioning when he launched his offense, alternating between his unusual inside foot position and the more standard outside angles that most southpaws stick to. This variety made exchanges more dynamic and unpredictable, meaning Marquez could never be quite sure which counters to use. Soon, Marquez became much more aggressive with his positioning, stomping forward to deny Pacquiao his preferred foot angles and plunging forward to deny him his favorite head positions. Like two muscle cars trying to merge into the same lane at full speed, the two would crash into each other repeatedly, resulting in accidental headbutts and purposeful foot stomps that drove Pacquiao out of position. As far as Marquez went, he had dialed in the footwork for his overhand, meaning he didn't need to shift forward to connect. He also enhanced the effectiveness of his right by setting it up with his left 
utilizing lead head and body hooks to move Pacquiao inside, directly into his rear hand. But then, Pacquiao learned to weave under and counter Marquez's hooks. And he came to rely more on his high guard to block Marquez's overhands when angling inside. Closing the gap Marquez had gotten away with exploiting so persistently. In their second encounter, Manny's high guard had halted Marquez's right, setting up a thunderous left counter that floored Marquez. But even with this knockdown, Marquez's creative feints and expert timing ensured that his overhand remained a potent threat. Though the story of each fight played out on different battlefields, the war hinged on these same consistent tactics. And this would hold true as the bell kicked off the fourth and final bout between these two era-defining greats. Uh... The crowd roared at the opening bell. It was immediately clear that both men would take nothing less than a knockout. With that one goal in mind, each was willing to court disaster on their way to victory. Familiar themes from the previous fights were immediately apparent, but now they came with a sense of desperate urgency. To do with uh, his new physical trainer, and if he throughout this fight. Speed, he's a natural counter puncher, and that's what he does best. So if Manny comes at him... Coming full circle, Pacquiao was again lunging in deep to clip Marquez with his left. But this time, his experience let him be much more defensively sound. Instead of lifting his rear foot as he shot out his straight left, he remained grounded and balanced, maintaining the full range of footwork and head movement. He now deftly avoided most of the uppercuts and body hooks that had troubled him so much in the previous fight. And again, throughout the second round, Pac-Man dominated. He carved through distance and weaved away from danger, cracking Marquez with stiff straights, uppercuts, and hooks, seemingly at will. Left hand down the middle, the way you fight the right handed guy. There was the left hook and then back upstairs by... Good left hand by Manny getting through. So far, Montez really hasn't done much by Manny Pacquiao. And one of those left hands, you know, in the first and second fight were the ones that sent him to the canvas. It's out of the way when this guy assaults him. Gets up first again and first again does Manny Pacquiao. The bell ends round two. He carried this momentum into the third, and it seemed it would be nothing but smooth sailing for the Filipino firecracker. But then, out of nowhere, Marquez again showed that he was one of the greatest Mexican boxers of all time. Willing to risk it all, he took a massive step to the outside. He glared at Manny's midsection, selling his intent to unleash to the body. And Pacquiao believed him, lowering his guard at the very last moment to shield his ribs. But this was all misdirection. Marquez's explosive right soared higher, arcing over Manny's guard and slamming the champion to the canvas. Pacquiao got back to his feet in an instant, pissed off and ready to rumble. But he was smart about it, giving himself time to clear the cobwebs and maintaining a strong defense until it was time to let loose. He literally dropped. It was a big, big right hand by Marquez. But what he hasn't done in the last few fights... Finally, with 15 seconds remaining, they went to war, slinging extended combinations, each punch with the potential to end the night right then and there. The crowd roared, up on their feet as the bell ended round three. Even the referee had to nod in approval. Pacquiao worked his way back in the fourth. Relying on his right hook and left uppercut to quell Marquez's aggression bounding in with left straights when the time was right. But in the final moments of the round, Marquez's patience wore thin. As Pacquiao tried to sail away from one last exchange, Marquez doggedly pursued him to the ropes, leaping forward to connect with the rattling right hook to Pacquiao's temple. As Manny tried to dart away inside, Marquez again hit home with the gut-wrenching right to the body. But Marquez's reckless bravado was a double-edged sword. And he wasn't the only one taking more chances. 
In the fifth, Pacquiao's darting, lunging lefts continued to deal damage, and the technique only enhanced one of his favorite counters. He slipped Juan's jab to drive in a tight left straight that sent him to the canvas. This same counter had nearly finished the fight for Pacquiao in their second encounter. And now, if Marquez wasn't careful, it would become the turning point in their final meeting. Still, Marquez's gloves had just touched the canvas, and he seemed ready to go right away. Manny didn't believe it and rushed in to finish the job. But Marquez deftly slipped outside of Pacquiao's hook and whipped a thunderous, tight overhand into his chin, catching Manny with the same counter that had just lost him the round. The impact pushed Pacquiao back, but only long enough for him to bang his gloves together before diving back into the fray. Both left into battle, each tirelessly throwing, defending, and countering. Manny darted in and out, mixing in deft lateral movement, but Marquez pursued, turning and matching Pacquiao head on to find his targets. Then, with under a minute remaining, Manny threw his left, then risk shifting forward to land a tremendous right. Marquez was hurt, his legs turned to stilts. Pacquiao chased his prey, a shark smelling blood in the water. He threw with more intensity than he ever had before, but Marquez stood his ground. Unwilling to fade away, he matched fire with fire. The two recklessly lobbing furious punches at each other with abandon until the bell. Both were driven to end it here, and they wouldn't take anything less than a definitive victory. The other had been a monkey on their back for nearly a decade, and they needed to end this, one way or another. As it turned out, that would happen in the very next round. The fighters answered the bell like it was a starting pistol, each pot shotting their way through the first minute. But then, Pacquiao made Marquez whiff on his overhand giving Manny a chance to finally respond with the tactic that worked against every other opponent, but rarely ever against Marquez. He rebounded back in, crashing forward with the four-punch combination, ending with a left straight that snapped Marquez's head back. Charging in, he slammed Marquez with a right hook that hit so hard it knocked a glob of Vaseline clear across the ring. But Marquez was at his best under pressure and dialed in tight counter. It's broken. Right on top of it again. What makes fighters fighters? Man, this is something else. These guys are so tough. Pacquiao stayed the course, again fading back for Marquez's overhand to pull off the same four-piece combination. Marquez was now pure rage, rushing forward like a bull seeing red. For a brief moment, Manny backed off. Resetting his rhythm for another barrage, he fainted back and forth, then double-stepped forward. But Marquez met him there, stepping outside to block his entry and leaning at an impossibly tight angle. So close, he let Manny's punch glide across his cheek. Marquez drove forward with a tight, ferocious overhand, slamming his fist into his longtime rival with the force of 42 rounds of frustration behind it. His foot taken out from under him, Pacquiao fell full force into the punch, with only Marquez's fist to catch him. The tremendous impact shut Pacquiao off, and he sank face first into the canvas. Marquez stood in disbelief. After four fights, 42 rounds, and six knockdowns, he had just KO'd his longtime rival, taking down one of the greatest boxers in history. Following this bout, Marquez would take two more fights, eventually retiring on a win. Pacquiao, on the other hand, would rebound and cement his legacy even further. And though each man carved their own unique path, this rivalry, like few others, helped define each of their journeys. Each had been forced back to the drawing board, improving their own styles and digging even deeper in an effort to finally vanquish a foe that just wouldn't quit. In the end, it was not only inevitable, but fitting 
that one man would end up on the campus. If you like this kind of stuff, check out our comic book, Mortal Weapons 1 and 2, out now. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.